Miley is an ordinary human being like you and everybody else in this world that God created. I come from a football family, a musical family, but more football. My father was a great football player and so were his brothers. I started my football career as a little boy playing football in the street with all my friends who I will never forget. My family, I have got a, a sister and three brothers. All three of them played football, only two of, the, uh, two of them didn't play at the highest level. When I say the highest level, although the one did play as a professional, in fact both of them, but they did not stand out like myself and my younger brother who is the last born and that's Zayn Musa which most people have seen him in action on TV. What's your name? My name is Esop Musa, but Smiley is just a nickname. That nickname came about when my uncle, who is four years older than me, my father's youngest brother, he used to watch a lot of movies and there was a movie called The Rango Kid and Smiley, Moose, uh, and Smiley Bernard. So when we used to play in the yard, you know, we used to uh, pretend we are cowboys and we had guns and we used to uh, shoot at each other, you know, and we used to ride uh, a broom, you know, pretending that the broom is a horse. So he called himself the Rango Kid and he called me Smiley. And the name continued ever since. I am from Marabastad. I was born in Marabastad. That is in, in the heart of Pretoria, the city center. It's just a kilometer away from the heart of the city center. Let me tell you something about Marabastad. It was a very small community of Indian and colored people. The Indians lived in an area called the Asiatic Bazaar. The colors lived in the Cape location. Now I lived in the Cape location with the colored people because my mother was a colored and I lived with my mother and her mother, my grandmother, while my father you know, he loved with his, his family. And we, we all knew each other, you know, as, as a food, as not only as, as football people, but as a family, you know, a, a community. We all knew everybody. And, you know, we, we went through very difficult days, but it, it was a great time, you know, to be with all those people. Most of them have left, they've gone to Estrus, others have gone to Lodium, and we, we have split, but we still keep in touch. And I went to school in Marabastad, to the Pretoria Boys Indian School, the junior school, and then the high school. I passed my matric in 1969, when I started my football career as a schoolboy in 1969. Well, our education was not of the best. You know, the whites had everything of the best. But, you know, we did what we had to do. We studied, you know, we tried to make a living for ourselves, to look for the, to the future, to become what we could never become, because we didn't have the opportunities. But in any case, I passed my matric and I couldn't become what I wanted to. But football was an outlet for many of us to, 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 to have an identity, for people to know us and, and what we are about. And that is what football gave me. It started in the street and then it graduated to the ground. So my football education was in the street, you know, with all the, my friends playing football, like all of us all over the country, living in townships, we didn't have any facilities. So what actually happened was that uh, at school, you know, we played for the school and people watched us and eventually we, uh, we became uh, noted and that's why I got into Sunnows at the age of 16. I was a very small boy, you know, frail, very small, you know, and uh, Ingel asked me to play for for sundowns against a team called Tokoza Hotspurs. And I refused to play because I was too small and those guys were like giants. But they had all the faith in me. They knew I had the ability even at that young age. I played as an inside left. Now, when, when I went onto the field, looked at the opposition, they were massive, those guys, you know. And this was my first experience in professional football. And I was really nervous, but all that disappeared within 15 minutes because I scored three in 15 minutes and I dribbled them all to a standstill. And they were all wondering, where did this little boy come from? And the rest, as they say, was history. I then went to play against my third game. I scored three against Tokoza Hotspurs, 
The next day was a Sunday. I scored two against Jamison Zebras. Now in those days, we used to play Saturdays and Sundays. The following week after that weekend, when I made my debut for Sundowns, we played Orlando Pirates. Now that was the greatest Pirates I've ever played against and ever saw. Chipa Molloy, Rasha Jacobs, Keza Mutaung, Bernard Dancing Shoes Arts, Rashid Khan, Rel Vendrix, Hans Moses, Tiki Koza, Msomi Koza, Zero Johnson, uh, City uh, Maipato, this, uh, Remember Maja, you know, Danger Fella. There were too many great players. And from Pirates, it went to Swallows. Big 15, before Chiefs uh, existed. And I tell you, our football was magical. We had players that would have given Ronaldo and Messi a go. We had La Mola at, uh, at Kaiser Chiefs, Ismu Soleng, Tines Ladla. Huh? So many world-class players who never got the opportunity to play at international level or to be seen by the world. But that is where we come from. I have never seen better players than those guys in my life again. You know, football is not a one-man show. You need your teammates. You know, if you want to go from point A to point B, you need them to get there. And they have to be on the same wavelength as what you are. You understand? And those guys were all quality players. They had this. In football, you need intelligence. They had the skill, the technique, uh, the understanding of what football is all about. And it was a joy playing football then. It's a pity that we were not allowed to play football then because we could have met every, everybody in the world. We had players like Tanti Julius, you know, and so many Bernard Dancing Shoes hearts that were as good as anybody in the world. This ball made a name for us all. People used to flock to the stadium to see us kick this ball. Without this ball, we would have been nowhere. The world would not have enjoyed what they are seeing now and in those days because of this ball. You need to know how to keep, how to control this ball. You need to know how to pass it with both sides of your, of your foot. You need to know how to play it with your chest, with all parts of your body, your movements. You need to keep this ball like it's glued to your feet. And you, you need to have the passing ability, the vision, the awareness, you know. And that is what makes a great football player. And to have the right attitude. A winning and a mentality and an attitude of never giving up and playing until the last whistle. Look, we didn't play football because of money. We played football because we loved it. And that was the reason why we played football. Not because of making it a business. We played football because we love to play football. We had the best, believe me. Now we don't. Now we have to produce the best. Same with politics. We, we had people like Mr. Mandela, and we have to thank him for what we are going through now, the opportunities that we have. But he also had a supporting cast to help him. Same as football. You also need people to help you. The reason I'm a Sundowns fan is because of Smiley Musa. Uh, I've met him a couple of years ago coming to Lordium, seeing this gentleman at the, the community fields uh, where he juggles with the ball whilst we are training hour and a half. Uh, and you would, it's unbelievable if you see the skill of the gentleman. In 2003, I remember before we went to England uh, for the Nike Cup, uh, he came over and we started chatting and from that time uh, we've got a cordial relationship. Every time he's there he gives me some tips on how he sees my, my players performing on the field. Uh, during that time he was also busy with a, with a team from the squatter camp uh, helping them out on technical issues. Uh, and we normally get to chat when he's there, but wow, if you see the gentleman and his skill level, it's unbelievable why the, the legends have not invited him to, to, to showcase his skill. I mean, he would show some of the youngsters a thing or two, and that is for sure. Well, he's, he's been very helpful to me. I mean, really, if, if you come up and you're from that stature and offering help, and, and on that basis, 
I think we had a very cordial relationship uh, with him assisting me on technical issues that sometimes you miss as a coach and he sees it from a different from a different angle and he's very outspoken about South African soccer the standard and how he he views it and you always appreciate that just to go out and enjoy ourselves meet each other huh? we used to marvel at each other meet people look see what is life in the townships huh? playing on sand grounds without flight lights training in the dark huh? I used to go to Lens and play football in Lens for a team called Swaraj. They had a man called Bila Singh. What a wonderful person, the manager of that club. Humble man who worked his, his, his butt off. I was a non-white and we couldn't play with the whites. No, this is great. I mean, you know, for the youth, what they did during that time, you know, how they uh, 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 confronted the uh, apartheid people, you know, who, uh, who completely destroyed our lives, you know so that we can have this better future that we, are, that, that we are having now. All the opportunities that we never had, you know, and, uh, and to build a future for, for the youth because they are the, the leaders of tomorrow. You know, I will never forget what Chipa Moloy told me. After we played Pirates the very first time, when I was 16 years old, I didn't know how to answer how to, because I used to see them play. Huh? And I never knew one day I would be playing against them so quickly in my career, right? When the game was over, Chipa called me. He said, Emilaiti Komiso. Now, Chipa, when it comes to pronouncing an R, he couldn't pronounce an R properly, you know. But he was a, he, he, he was a, I'm telling you, an, a genius of football, Chipa Moloy. You know, for him to come and approach me, a little Laitiki at school, playing against a giant like him, he said, Komiso Emilaiti, you know in Afrikaans. Who are you? He said, Vis J. J. Lexus is a boor. LSH is a char, an Indian. He spell for the bushes. My just spell balls with a ducky. <laughs> when we used to play uh, against pirates and, and all these teams, there were white people used to come and watch us play because they used to marvel at our skill. And one guy approached my father and said, let him come and play for Berea Park in the all white football league. They had a professional league called the National Football League. We non-white players, we were not allowed to play with them, you know. That's why our football could never reach that, uh, that world-class uh, level. Although we had world-class players during the apartheid era. So in any case, my father told me that he's, he's going to take me to Berea Park and I'm going to play for them. They were in the semi-final of the Coca-Cola Cup and they had drawn 2-2 against Rangers in the first leg. So they were playing the second leg here in Pretoria and they had to get into the final because they were on top of the log as well. So I had to go and play but as Atta Williams, not Smiley Musa. I went to play that night, we beat them 3-1. I dribbled them to a standstill and I told them, you know, when the crowd, the, the non-white people, because we had a section where only you know, they, they used to treat us like uh, animals, you know, lock us up in a little cage and watch the game, you know. And the, the crowd used to, when I ran onto the ground, they said, smiley, smiley, that's not Arthur Williams. Even my teammates were asking me the way they were cheering me, uh, who's smiley? I said, I don't know who's smiley. Anyway, we won 3-1. And then they discovered I wasn't white, I was a famous Sundowns player. So the government stopped me from playing for Berea Park. And then I went overseas. I went to play for West Ham for a short while and I went to Holland to play for Go Ahead Eagles on loan. I could have played for Ajax when Johan Cruyff was there, but I, I couldn't stand the cold. I went back to England to play for West Ham again and I had too many problems with work permits and all that. Eventually I was, I was deported back home and I didn't want to return to go through all that trouble again and I remained here. And this is where I always wanted to be. And this is where I always wanted to play. And I think for the youth, we need people who can teach children and help them how to play this beautiful game, the way it was played during the apartheid era. Football is not a game you talk. Football is a game you show. And there are many of us who can show you how to play this game. We can't teach you, but we can show you and help you to become a better football player and enjoy this game.
Football is a good sport because it can takes you it takes you out from the streets. People do bad things. They smoke dacha. So during the days when you are at soccer, you can't do those things. Today we are going to test my limosa. How can we come to your king? So we sit down and we pass. So we hope to land. Oh, as my limosa, we are going to see what we are going to see. We are going to see the melody. 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 We are going to le re re tla la gona mo ground to ya re na ya rosina ke motho e le gore fela e tle ba bitsa di master so gore tle re tla re tla la le a wa etse ba bolo e ye na ja ka motho ke motho o jwang o nka mo discover jwang like a idiri like a le tla la ka o fela e a wa se motho go kwana le go bolela thata yena le go ile gore go ne le 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 rofa se motho go ba pala rofa ba pala ba pala ga botse a Joel Luna ka di supporta ga ha le bapala ka pa le trainer with such a legend le ikutlwa jwang a re ikutlwa re le mona a tikane re khona go botsa le ba le ba banyane gore ne bole be e tla la jwang mo la pele Uh, but David, thank you so much on joining us on Eta Diski. We are celebrating Ama Legend with Webola who have contributed in the beautiful game. So today we have U, um, Smiley Musa. When I say Smiley Musa, what goes through your mind? What do you remember about him? Mm, basically, I haven't seen him playing professionally because by then I was not born. I only saw him now. For the past 10 years, uh, I've been hanging around him playing with him at ground level. But the way I heard about he was a great player and I have seen at the, at the ground level. He's a, he's, a, he's a great player at around 65 years. You can't believe when he's playing around the ball, having the ball, playing with kids. It's, when he has the ball, you think maybe he's around 16 or 20 years. He can outrun those boys. He's, he's, he's a marvelous to watch. So I just imagine when we was still 16, 20, 25, 30, how we play. But the way I hear, the way I, I hear about him, it, it, it's, just, it, it's just so marvelous. And it's a pity that I, I haven't seen play. But uh, seeing him now at 65 is unbelievable. Yeah. Okay, when he was playing, when you heard about him, did they mention Oguti Yini, very special guy in the field of play? Uh, they said he was a professional player, great player. He played a along Bukizam Taung and so many great players. And it clicked in my mind. And when I saw him personally, and when he, when he does his stuff on the, on the ground now, I, I, can, I, I, can, I, can, I can imagine... I was just crying because he played during that the apartheid time and picturing what today is just, you know, I can't believe. I just can't believe. I remember one time, it was five years back when Cosmos came here, they played, we played, we played Cosmos. He outran those guys. They were so shocked that is, is it smile, even Joma himself was so shocked. Is it smile that can still run the way he runs? with the ball doing this stuff. So it's unbelievable. Well, I'm a retired guy now. I used to be one of South Africa's best horse racing commentators. When I, yeah, horse racing commentators at Turfontein, Newmarket, The Val, Gosford Park. I was Bloemfontein's commentator for eight years. <laughs> and I, where to go? They're all set. 
And Country Queen came out well on the inside, straight to the lead. Codebreaker right there, second. Adirmas third. Shining Star on the outside, fourth. They follow, they, they go past Mina Marcus, Shining Star. Still enjoying himself, his two lanes clear. Double Decker right there on his tail in second. Adirmas third. That's just a little snippet that I've given you. <laughs> but this is the game that I would like to teach young people. Yeah. 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 Yeah.